that are affecting me Rising crime, poverty, issues in my own country But today we're talking about it Yes, we're gonna talk about it Ain't nobody wants to open their mouth But we don't speak out at the Youth Zone Searching for solutions for the issues in our nation That's the only way we know that we can make it It's going down At the Youth Zone We may be young, but we're the next generation And we're here to save our nation Hey everyone, and hope you've gotten a terrific start to your new year. Welcome to the Youth Zone. Well, we know the month of January is filled with all kinds of new promises, targets, and goals and resolutions. Whether it's to become a better person, lose some weight, gain more success, or just live happier. It's about all you can hear people talking about for the entire month. All of the ads focus on the latest fashion trends and diets, all in an effort to get you off to a good start with some positive plans. But truth be told, at the end of the month, like right about now, people start to ditch these goals they set at the beginning of the year. Very true. Yeah, you're right, Holly. In fact, returning to some old habits are probably looking good right about now. And for some, that means becoming depressed that you didn't stick to your goals. Others begin to lose motivation because the struggle is just too real. What would you do? Do you ditch those goals for a less miserable run? Or do you stick with it, redefine it if you must, and stay the course? Very interesting, both of you. On today's show, we talk about ditching those New Year's resolutions. Is it a bad thing? Or what should you do when the temptation is at your greatest to return to the same old? In fact, are New Year's resolutions among young people played out? Do they even make them anymore? Well, our discussion begins when we come right back. Stay close, you're in the youth zone. <laughs> want to save this year, I won't say I want to save 10 grand. And you only, <laughs> you, you working at Wendy's, you only make like what, $2 an hour. What? Nobody on that room. So young people aren't making goals anymore? No, no. I mean, my goal, my goal is to get, the, the, get some pair of shoes. Not that. <laughs> but some of the goals like these people make, they don't even take a year to obtain. Like some of these goals are really like out of this world. Like what? talking about ditching those New Year's resolutions and whether young people actually still make them. How do you feel about this issue and how has it affected you? To find out what you have to say, our social media correspondent Shanae has this week's responses. Over to you, Shanae. Thanks guys. We're always excited to hear from you on our topic of the week and boy didn't we get some interesting responses. Let's take a look. James McKinsey says, My New Year's resolution for 2016 is to stop using obscene language and learning how to control my anger and frustrations by thinking before I act in all situations. Toya Brown says, My New Year's resolution for 2016 is to get better grades in math and social studies by focusing more in class and studying my spare time so that I can hopefully make the principal's list for this school year. So, we want to hear from you guys. Stay tuned to our social media sites on Twitter at YouthZone242, Instagram at, at the Youth Zone 242 and Snapchat the Youth Zone. And don't forget our Facebook page, The Youth Zone. View our question of the week and send us a 20-second video of your opinion. That's our social media report for the week. Back to you guys. Thanks a lot. Well, it's time to turn it up. There's still the life of the party, even in 2016, and the muse with all the views. Yeah, yeah, we're talking about our TYZ panel. Hey, welcome back. Happy New Year to all of you guys. Hope you had a great holiday and a great break. Okay, so let's talk about this whole thing about New Year's resolutions. First of all, um, how many of you actually made New Year's resolutions? Let me see your hand, honestly. Honestly, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> One or two people. So are they... E are they even relevant, or do you find that people are, are prior to, prior, probably right about now, the end of the month, ditching those resolutions that they've made? 
Yes. Uh, my thing is, they are relevant, right? But for those who actually ditch them, I don't think it's relevant to them. Mainly because I don't think that they have any clear objective as to how will they achieve these New Year's resolutions. Because mm. many people, they understand the concept of New Year's resolution and they make them every year, but they don't have no clear objective. They don't say, okay, if I'm going to lose weight, don't just say I'm going to lose weight as a New Year's objective, I mean as a New Year's resolution. Simply say, I'm going to lose 20 pounds, even though you probably need to lose 50 or maybe a bit more. <laughs> but I'm just saying like, have a guideline, right, have right. steps to say, this is what I will accomplish. More than just making, a, making a, a declaration, Ex have a plan, exactly. But I don't. I feel like why? Why we have to wait till you, the um new, the new year to make a make a goal for ourselves? I feel like we need to be a culture of goal setters. Like we, if we have something that we want to do, it it shouldn't take the new year for you to think about it. Mm -hmm. If you want to become a better person, we'll do it today. Like I have goals. That's why I don't make you New Year's resolutions. I have goals that I am going to continue to go through um this 2016. So it's not about the new year. It's about my goal. Good point. Mm -hmm. I agree with Elcha on that point. You ought to set goals for yourself and for you people that make these new year's resolutions it is okay to drop them okay it is okay so why make it's them if, if you're gonna drop it why make it i think for exactly. a lot of people it's just kind of like it hey it's new year's that's what well, what's your new year's resolution yeah. and you share them it's just it's more of a tradition you know like people make them because that's what we do you know no one really says you know man i really i gotta stick this new year's resolution it's like in the moment if it, if uh. but, but here's what i think i think that for new year's resolution you're supposed to make a long-term goal so then as yeah. the year goes through you make short-term goals which leads up to you making that goal so that's what i think like if you trying to if you made a goal day saying that i want to make a 3.4 well, first of all, look for your bad habit and, and make a short-term goal saying, okay, then I'll just make studying as a habit or whatever, and then make another goal with leads with studying until it builds up to making your goal for that academic journey. But people don't be into that. That's what you're trying to say. Nobody, nobody on that room. So young people aren't making goals anymore? No. No, no. I mean, my goal, my goal is to get the... the get some pair of shoes. Yeah. <laughs> but some of the goals like these people make, they don't even take a year to obtain. Like some of these goals are really like out of this world. Like what? Like sometimes some people may say, okay, by the end of this year, I want to go ahead and even say be on Dan and Ness. They some of this goal, right? But they haven't did the first thing in journalism yet. They haven't got their degree yet. And some of these goals really do take a long time to obtain. So you can't just say, I'm going to make this resolution by the end of 2016, I need to accomplish this. Because Say you could be in 2018 and you still haven't accomplished it yet, so it takes some time for some of these goals. Is it okay to make a goal and not achieve it? For, for, for a resolution and not achieve it? Have you failed? Uh, I think that it's, 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 it's not okay to make a goal if you know within yourself that you're not going to achieve it. I think it, I, my thing is you should make realistic goals. Rather than just saying, like, like what Holly was saying, like make these things realistic. If you're, if you're going, like for example, if, if you want to save this year, don't say I want to save 10 grand and you only, <laughs> you, you work in our Wendy's, you only make like what, $2 an hour. But what's the like, point of setting a goal if, if, it, if you know you can easily attain it? Shouldn't a goal be something that you have to work yeah, towards challenging. That, that's challenging to you? The Olive, I know you want to talk. <laughs> well, comment on what Elsa said when there's a difference between goals and New Year's resolutions. I feel like people make New Year's resolutions just because everyone else is doing it. And that's why most people fall off when they do it. But isn't most things done because people, are, everybody else is doing it? It's called a trend. It's a yeah. bad habit. Yeah, it's a bad habit of our society. I feel like we shouldn't make so much of a trend of making these New Year's resolutions just for setting a goal and failing. I think New Year's, once the New Year comes in, you should, it should be focused on introspection, looking at like what's wrong with your life, how you can make it better. Instead of, you know, it doesn't have to be about the goal. It can just be about, you know, I'm going to look into my life and see what I can do better. Interesting, interesting. Well, when we come back, our discussion intensifies and we meet our special guest. Stay close, you're in the youth zone. It's no surprise that young people nowadays don't make um, New Year's resolutions, and that is because they've seen adults just use New Year's as a catalyst 
At one point, I had a New Year's resolution, which was to stop drinking sodas, and I actually did stop. But because the people around me, they didn't support me, I ended up drinking sodas again. So it's their fault. Let's blame it on them. <laughs> There's this pressure that everybody knows in January, you better find one health club, one fitness club, one gym, something to lose weight, because everybody's doing it. And if you feel as if you sit sitting home, you can come depressed because you ain't doing what everybody else is doing. Searching for solutions for the issues in our nation That's the only way we know that we can make it It's going down At the youth zone We may be young but we're the next generation Let us save our nation oh, oh. At the youth zone You are now in the youth zone <laughs> Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we're talking about ditching New Year's resolutions and why the young people still make them and stick to them. Let's meet our guest. She's been with us several times before and I call her our in-house expert now. <laughs> she is a behavioral therapist at Bridgepoint Consultancy. She's also a former teacher of 12 years and is passionate about working with young people. Please welcome back to the Uso, Ms. Philippa Farrington. Hey. <laughs> Happy New Year, Philippa. Thank you. Okay, let's get right into it. Our young, we've clearly heard the young people really into the resolution thing anymore like we thought. Um, and do you find that by the end of the month of January, most people who've made these, er, these goals that perhaps are difficult are beginning to ditch them by the end of January? Yes. Um, it's no surprise that young people nowadays don't make um, New Year's resolutions. And that is because they've seen adults just use New Year's as a catalyst. Um, one of the panelists actually mentioned making goals throughout the year. That's more realistic and that's what we should do. I find that at the end of the month, maybe by February, March, most people are dropping their New Year's resolutions and some of the people said it is because they're unrealistic, not only that, they're striving for, for, for perfection. So the question mm. is, is perfection attainable? Mm. Another thing is they don't consider their resources. This is your objective or your goal, but do you have the skills? Do you have the tools? Do you have the money? Do you have the time? to achieve these mm. things. I think it was a young man over there in the red. I think he mentioned something like that. When you set a goal, you have to be sure that you have what it takes to achieve that goal. Now, somebody else said something about, um, if you don't achieve that goal, have you failed? No, it's a normal thing for us to slip up and make mistakes, but you fail when you don't get back on the bandwagon. Mm. Okay, that's considered failure. But if you slip up and, you know, I I'm gonna lose 10 pounds, and then you go and you have a fried cheesecake, uh, that's okay, you know. <laughs> wow. Yeah, they do that, right? That's wow. okay. Just get back on the bandwagon and continue at it. And another thing that I think we missed was having an accountability partner. Ah. Mm -hmm. That helps to motivate you when you have someone who can, you know, be a cheerleader on the sideline. Mm -hmm. yeah. That helps a lot. So most people who um, drop their New Year's resolutions, one, don't have the resources, two, make unrealistic goals, three, try for perfection, four, don't have an accountability partner. Should you come into the year with a goal or resolution? Should, I mean, should everybody at least come into the New Year saying, this is what I want to achieve, this is what I want to do? I think so. Because what resolutions do, all resolutions simply mean is it's a solution to a problem that I have. Mm. There's some behavior that's a problem that I want to change. And what that does is it helps to give our life direction. And also it helps us to find more meaning mm. in our lives. So if you've identified that there's a problem that you need to change, even before January 1st, um, you know, begin to make progress towards changing that or make plans towards changing that. So you are going to come into the new year with a goal. I like what you said, it's a solution to a problem. So mm -hmm. that means a, a new year's resolution could simply be, simply be as simple as, I want to improve my attitude. As right. simple as that. It don't have to be something grandiose, like I, I want to achieve X amount and Z in my exams. I want to do X, Y, Z. Right. It could be as simple as I want to improve how I act and how I treat people. Yes. And you know, I, I believe some people act as if the new year is a new life. I yeah. always tell, I all, like for me, I've completely given up on New Year's resolution. <laughs> because at one point I had a New Year's resolution, which was to stop drinking sodas, and I actually did stop. But because the people around me, they didn't support me, I end up drinking sodas again. So it's their fault. Let's the blame year. it on them. <laughs> and I mean, and then, you know, it, it, it goes back to the support system, the environment. You can't just make New Year's resolutions just because you want to. You have to actually have a plan. Yeah. I, I think I have a, a question. Is the problem really 
um, New Year's resolutions or is it goal setting as a whole? Because I think even throughout the whole year, people will say, you know, I, I want to lose weight or I want to do better in school. And they'll say it on impulse. Mm -hmm. And maybe for a week or two, they'll follow it and it'll drop off just the same as a New Year's resolution. So is this kind of uh, backsliding only limited to New Year's resolution or is it for goal setting in the whole? Um, I think it's for goal setting on the whole. Mm -hmm. if, we, if, if we have proper goal setting strategies, plans, techniques, we know how to do it mm -hmm. properly, then we'll stick with it. And all, it also deals with the person, the person on the inside. Are you a follow through-er, if that's a, mm -hmm. even a word? Or are you someone who procrastinates or someone is just, you know, wishy-washy goes with the flow? So it also depends on the type of personality that you have that's gonna drive that goal that you've set once you've understood how you write attainable goals. Yeah, but I think for any goal, you have to check back in, whether it be two weeks or within a month, because if I'm going to make this goal today, I'm going to go ahead and check back in in another two weeks to make sure, did I really start? Did I make some sort of progress? Because people who make these goals, usually they just make them, they start out with this great plan and they follow through with it for like seven days. And after that, they completely forget about it until the next year comes around. They're like, remember that New Year's resolution I had in January? Well, that only lasted me for a week. So I think you have to check in peri periodically in order to really follow through with the goal. You know what else? You know, I'm glad you raised that point because I automatically what came to my mind is our smartphones. I think there's a task or a calendar that yeah. most of them have that has a reminder. Some of us may even have to go that far. Yeah. Okay, because if we are left to remind ourselves, we probably won't. So if we have technology assisting us or our accountabil accountability partner, then we have that reminder and we can check back in. Yeah. Can failure of those resolutions lead to depression? Oh yeah. And what's worse, Clint, is when you have somebody that already has um, anxiety issues and depressive issues and they set goals and they can't see the progress that they're making. Uh, I feel that like, makes it worse. I feel like in our society, like we, we don't accept failure very well. Like even as people, like as people, like if I see someone yeah. fail, like we we, we want to point out that you fail, you know. And I feel like it's it's just you, it's okay. Like it's okay to do something and it be a mistake, and you learn from it, and then you just continue to go from it. Like I feel like as a, as a society, we put too much pressure sometimes. The pressure's on, on no doubt about it. I mean, you, I mean, think about it. You you know, instantly, especially in, in television, in January and February, the only commercials you see on television is every diet plan, yeah. every eating healthy lifestyle. I mean, it, 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 it right in your face, yeah. and so it can become overwhelming. And you and, and you and you're there thinking, well, how do I do this? There's so many things out there. Which one do I go after? And it becomes you begin you're gonna feel the anxiety because yeah. there's this pressure that everybody knows. In January, you better find my health club on fitness club on gym, something to lose weight because everybody's doing it. Yeah. And if you feel as if you sit at home, you can become depressed because you ain't doing what everybody else is doing. Right. And, and I don't think that's the best way to find a, 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 a addressing a solution. Mm -hmm. yeah. One of the things that I find that we do is we post most of our lives and our activities on social media. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you post your New Year's resolutions, teens, on social media, then you are welcoming pressure because now all of your followers and the public is now aware of what it is that you set out to do. And when they realize, if they're, if they're not all of your followers are your fans, they're haters probably. Mm -hmm. So uh, the minute they see you slip up, they're there, yeah, you failed, like you said. So be careful of what you put out there. If you don't want that extra pressure, then be careful. Well, Sorry, but I feel there. like it's often important to declare what you're going to do. Sometimes we don't, as people, we don't have the willpower to, to achieve those goals. Mm -hmm. So letting other people know what you're going to do mm -hmm. gives them the opportunity to know that you want a support system. Mm -hmm. And if they choose to support you, they choose to. If they choose to scrutinize your failure, mm -hmm. that's their choice. But if putting it out there for other people is not off is often the right thing to do, in my opinion. And, and also, don't you think in some cases your haters can be your motivators? Uh, as cheesy as it is, some people, if you think about it, we talk about accountability. Yeah, sure, positive. You know, pressure can be good, but sometimes feeling like, hey, no one else wants me to fail, so I'm yeah. gonna fail. I, I'm sorry, I'm gonna succeed from me, you know, not for anyone else, but they doubt me, but I'm gonna prove them yeah. wrong. Don't you think for some types of people that can actually help them? Yeah, I agree with you. Sometimes it's the operative word, 
Because for me, that's something I love when someone tells me I can't do something. And you end up doing it. Awesome. Oh, I, I, I love it. Well, we're running out of time. I want to give you the last word, yeah. uh, Philippa. What advice do you give to young people? At right about now, this is where you're coming to the end of the first month. Some people may feel as if they're doing well with their goals. Some may feel as if they're failing. What advice do you give to young people? Well, for those of who have set goals or resolutions and you're doing well, I say, you know, I applaud you and I say continue. For those of you who have set them and you've fallen off that bandwagon, I say to you, I encourage you to get back on. If you don't know how to get back on, you don't know how to maintain, because that's the, it's easy to make them, difficult to maintain them, then find someone who has probably set some goal before and has achieved it and allow them to assist you. But get back on that bandwagon, ride that horse to the finish line. Awesome. Well, we're not out of talk. But we're out of time, so let's continue the discussion on social media at our Facebook page, The Youth Zone, and Twitter page at The Youth Zone 242. Or meet us on our interactive chat live at zenonestbahamas.com because we want to hear from you. Well, don't go anywhere. Your TYZ News is up next after the break. We may be up with the next generation, and we're here to save our nation. Zone. You are now in the youth zone. Hi everybody, I'm Alexia Johnson. And I'm Jose Etienne, and we're back, bringing you not only important, but also relevant youth news. Youth Against Crime, a youth anti-crime group, organized a noiseless protest in Rawson Square in memory of those who were murdered last year. This newly formed group of protesters was led by their 16-year-old president, Tracy Sands, to conduct a 2 minute and 29 second mass death reenactment one second for the 149 persons who calamitously lost their lives in 2015. According to the group's president, YAC's birth was a reaction to the tragic death of Adonai Wilson, a former 12th grader at Doris Johnson Senior High School. Ms. Sands also made it patently clear that YAC is a movement that aims to see a reduction in crime that is crippling our nation through the team's voices, peaceful protests, thoughtful suggestions, and interactive venturing that engage and target people in our age bracket. As the College of the Bahamas makes its transition to university status, it finds itself still plagued with an age-old problem of long lines during registration. It's a story our TYZ reporter Xavier Knowles has been following. The College of the Bahamas student body recently experienced something that is becoming a norm at the soon-to-be University of the Bahamas. The final day for spring 2016 payment was the first day of business in the new year for the college where scores of scholarship students and deferred payment students waited in lines for up to 12 hours just to submit their letters of financial scholarship and funds to have the windows shut in their face at 12 midnight. The furious students then took to social media and demanded an apology from the college especially after the president of the college pointed fingers at the students to say it was all their fault. Here is the statement from the college. College community, please be advised that on Monday, January 4th, an inordinate number of returning students were on lines at the college attempting to either make payments by cash, scholarship, or arrange a deferred payment plan. Some students waited for the last minute to make payments and opted not to use the online payment system. The very same online payment system was credited back in August 2015 as the most uneventful and smooth payment and registration process the college has experienced in several years. Reporting for TYZ News, I'm Xavier Knowles. C.R. Walker represented the Northwestern District in a debate competition after securing championship over C.C. Sweeting by 137 points. Andrus and the Barry Islands District were represented by students from North and Central Andrus. Andrus defeated C.R. Walker with a compelling rebuttal argument outlining that children do have the power of choice but may often not make the right choice. The moot or topic was be it resolved that parents should be held legally responsible for the actions of their schooled aged children. 
Seattle Walker lost this round by 10 points in close call 819 to 829. All right. We want to hear from you if you have news regarding our phenomenal youth. Well, that, my friends, is the news for this week. I'm Alexi Johnson. And I'm Jose Etzin. Please don't touch that remote. Stay, Stay tuned for more Youth Zone after, after the break. break. back with another exciting season of learning to speak Mandarin in our language coach Tanya McFall has some new and innovative lessons for us hey Tanya welcome happy new year happy new year everyone hey. so today we're going to go over a little song okay it's called Xin Yan Hao Ya Xin Yan Hao Ya means who can guess it happy, happy birthday year. happy new year all right since this is the new year we're going to start off with the happy new year song repeat after me Xin Yan Hao Ya so what we said just now was uh, happy new year happy new year happy new year we wish everybody a happy new year all right so we're going to sing this to this song of everybody remember oh my darling clementine all right so we're going to sing it to that tune everybody ready e r sun Alright, let's do it again. Yeah. Everybody ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why we were practicing earlier. Mm. <laughs> Alright. Shin Yan Hao Ya. Shin Yan Hao Ya. Shin Yan Hao Ya. Shin Yan Hao Ya. Ju He Da Ja. Ju He Da Ja. Shin Yan Hao. All right, so that's better. We're doing better. All right, so we're gonna add we're gonna add another part to it. Oh, yeah, we got that one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it says woman chunga woman tiao chu he da ja shin yan hao. So what it means woman don't worry, we're gonna go through it. So woman chang means we sing. Okay? Woman Changa, we sing. Woman Tiawu, we dance. Chu He Da Jia, Shin Yan Hao. We wish everybody a happy new year. You ready to give it a try, guys? Mr. Watson, you looking quite confused? I'm ready. I'll direct. I direct well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, you ready to give it a try, everybody? Yeah. yeah. All right, you ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. We're going to start from the top. E R San. Shinyan Hao Ya, Shinyan Hao don't worry, no, we'll, we'll, pra we'll, we'll practice again next time. So, that's our lesson for today. Xin Yan Hao Ya. Xin Yan Hao But it's about that time for our focus on encouraging entrepreneurship. Uh, we call it Stripes in My Own Business, and this season we focus on Bahamas Striping Company. Take a look. What is a Bahamian business? If it's a business operating in the Bahamas that improves some aspect of our social landscape, fuels money back into the Bahamian economy, while giving Bahamians an opportunity to develop professionally and personally, then Bahamas Striping definitely fits the bill. Formed three years ago by young entrepreneur and government self-starter recipient, Atario Mitchell, Bahamas Striping is not just dedicated to marking roads, but committed to leaving indelible marks on the lives of young Bahamians. Youth who are not just in search of a job, but in pursuit of a career. Well, in this particular field, this uh, market was normally controlled by a foreign company. And once I started my company, uh, I, I wrote letters uh, to the government letting them know that I'm a Bahamian company, that, that this work shouldn't be given to foreigners. Uh, uh, I'm a Bahamian, I actually employ Bahamians. The foreigner doesn't employ any Bahamian at all. 
So I, I, I feel that as a Bahamian, employing Bahamians, I feel that I should have first right to this uh, uh, job. And, and I wasn't like, I was successful in getting some work, uh, but now uh, after, after meeting with, with the Deputy Prime Minister, uh, Mr. Davis, uh, he assured me that, he assured me and, and, and my company along with other, other striping companies that we will have a fair chance to get work under their administration. And so far, I have been getting a fair chance and, and, and work, work, work you see me, what, what, what I'm doing now is actually work that, that, that was given to me through the ministry. And all I have, all they ask me to do is uh, keep up the good standards and, and, and keep on employing the image. Maintaining a quality standard is not just lip service for Mitchell who took an unprecedented and costly approach to employee development and training. Mr. Mitchell and his company, uh, I consider them very visionary. Um, he has, over the past six to nine months, I'm, I'm, I think, has bought in uh, a UK, tra uh, a UK uh, trainer um, that is properly trained in striping. And, and the gentleman has been actively involved in embracing the, um, the UK standard um, and lending that assistance to his company. So they are doing that on a daily basis. I know that they're having meetings um, outside of their project portfolio. So they are being properly trained and I must commend him for a three-year company spending that type of resources um, to bring in a, a consultant at this time to properly train his staff. So he has taken all the necessary steps that need to be taken in order for his company to further advance. Well, there's, there's, there's two types of striping, there's, there's paint and there's thermoplastic, like what we're what we doing now, that is, that is what, you, what, you, what you see on the major highways and stuff like that. It's a more complex product, so and, and dealing with the highways, the, the markings have to be accurate. So what I did is I, I went and found a, a, a UK certified striper named Brian Bostock and bring him in to train me and uh, my crew to, to make sure that we do the work after the correct standards. The work that uh, Mr. Mitchell and his company does up to this point is presently on par and I can say um, the last set of work that I've witnessed is even uh, better than some of the work that we have seen done by their foreign counterpart. And even though it may seem that road striping is really just striping the road, closer inspection reveals this industry is more technical than it seems. Welcome back. What's happening in your school? What sets you apart from the rest? Well, every week, you know, we find out what's going on in the different schools by featuring a different school. However, this week, we put aside the schools just for one week, just so that we can highlight an outstanding Bahamian youth who's making waves worldwide. You may have seen him featured recently on the biggest gig probably he's had so far, and that is as a featured artist in the Miss World pageant all the way from China. And of course, he made the Bahamas so proud with the Caribbean slide and all of other things he did. Please welcome our special guest to talk about his phenomenal success, Julian Believe. So listen, 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 I can't, I can't tell you how much of excitement I had in front of my television um, just watching you come out there and represent the Bahamas. We watch pageants over and over, but to see a Bahamian artist take the stage with so much confidence and so much outstanding performance, you were simply phenomenal, Jillian. What was that experience like for you? Um, I was proud because we took something from Nassau, something that people saw us working for years and years and years and years. And, and at that moment, we was back on the international stage. And it made me feel like, listen, if you really, really work hard and you believe in yourself, like anything is truly possible. And it, at that moment, it became bigger than me. It, it was almost, that, that was for the country. I think that, that was our moment as a country to, to show the world that, listen, as Bahamians, we're good enough and we're international. So. It, you, you couldn't buy that opportunity, and it feels so good to be able to represent the country.
What was the reception like? I mean, we saw people excited, but I'm sure we couldn't see what was happening. How did they receive the oh, Bahamian man. music? Um, boy, that, that we had about 10,000 people in the crowd. Everyone was out of their seats doing the slide. Um, just to have 200 girls from all over the world, the, the queens from all over the world, um, performing a dance that was born bred in the Bahamas. Like, yo, it was... You... Like an opportunity like that is like once in a lifetime, and it's the first time a Caribbean artist has ever been able to grace that stage and have that big of a platform at one time. Wow! You know, um, we had in excess of uh, one billion viewers um, one time, and um, in less than one week, um, the Caribbean slide, the video, we had a million views on YouTube. What? Yeah, wow. So, wow! You know? Wow! Um, but let me just say the probably the biggest and the best feeling in the world for me was seen all of the Bahamians share the video and record it from the TV, from their phones, and tagging people and sharing it. I mean, that that right there was an historic moment in my career, and I felt like that was like almost the paradigm shift in what we needed for our industry to, to make people say, you know what, we, we really should get behind our Bahamian artists and, and the creative community as a sector. So it's, it's it, it was a tremendous experience. And a happy one. I, I feel good, man. I, it's, yeah. No doubt you're expecting, obviously, the doors, the phones are going to be ringing off the hook for future opportunities for you. Certainly. And you're positioning. Tell us some of the things you're doing to position yourself to embrace the opportunity. Well, one of the things that I really, really must say is, see, because we had a, a carnival here last year, what that did for artists that were prepared was it gave you an opportunity to, to set yourself up and conduct yourself like a business and ensure that if you stayed ready, you never had to get ready. So when we got that call to go to China, the website was up, the iTunes was up, the YouTube content was up, the social media content was up. We were prepared for that moment. And um, since then, uh, I've been working on, I've been working secretly on a, a huge collaboration which features uh, Beanie Man from Jamaica, Father Fox who sings the Duckin' song, Ricardo Drew who sings Vagabond. And it's the first time ever in the history of our country a Bahamian artist with a Bahamian sound has these artists on their song. And, and um, that's my new release that I'm giving to the Bahamian people and we're about to share that with the world. We have a Caribbean side remix coming. I ain't going to tell you who's going to be on it, but, you know, it's, it's awesome. going to be good for the country. Uh. You know? <laughs> um, we, have, we have bookings as far as Japan um, wow. and the Fiji Islands, and we're going wow. to Trinidad and book for Jamaica Carnival this year. And I, I really, wow. um, I'm just really happy to say that, you know, because of the support of the Bahamian people, and them really believing in me is what really led to this opportunity because the Caribbean slide was a movement. It, it wasn't just me going up there and working it. I had hundred people and one hundreds of people at a time doing flash mobs with me and just you know going into schools and seeing the kids doing it and them going online and telling someone and then sharing their videos. All of that contributed to 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 the success of the Caribbean slide and being able to get on that world stage. That's awesome. What advice did you um, have for young artists or uh, people that are interested in performing arts becoming a career for them? You know, no matter what it is that you want to do, whether it be in the performing arts sector or whether you want to be a doctor, a lawyer, whatever it is, a garbage man, whatever you want to be, is, as long as you believe that you can do it, that's it. You can believe. Hey, no pun intended. Take a believe out of you. <laughs> no pun intended at all. No pun intended at all. And, and, and it's crazy because, see, Believe was actually a song that I had. It was my first release. My name was just Julian. And so many people who knew me along the way knew that when I first started, the guys didn't want to record me. I used to sit out the studio for hours waiting for these guys to let me in the studio. They wouldn't. And every time I tried to get the support from the local artists, everyone would just, you know, they would just kick me to the curb. When I went on stage the first time, my classmates booed me. You know what I mean? There were so many opportunities that I could have said, you know what, forget it. I'm going to do something else and just be regular. But you know, if you got that feeling inside that, listen, man, I'm going to do this regardless of what you say and what you think, you're going you, you gonna to do what you have to do. In addition to that, you have to keep positive people around you. And you have to keep people around you that are going to uplift you and motivate you to be the best that you can be. You also have to invest in yourself, you know. Um, last year, I bought my first car. All those schools that I went to, I was catching the bus to go to. Wow. You know what I mean? Um, I would have brought, of course. You know, what school was that? 
Oh, of course, you know, you had to represent and go to quite <laughs> a, a few other schools. We went to every school in Nassau. We went to schools in Exuma, Freeport. We went throughout the entire Bahamas promoting the Grimmie side, and we did all that out of pocket. So it was an investment on our side first before I bought that iPhone 6 or 5 or, you know, that nice car with the rims on it, you know, on the laundry, you know. So, yeah. you know. <laughs> Some good advice there, Julian. We're so proud of you. We're so excited. And, of course, don't go anywhere. He graced the stage of Miss World, but now there's nothing like gracing the stage of the YouTube. He's up next. Julian Believe is performing after the break. It's going down at the youth zone. We may be young, but we're the next generation. And we're here to save a nation. Oh, at the youth zone. We're to save a nation. Well, it's been great hanging with you. Hit us up on Twitter at YouthZone242, face, at Facebook at the Youth Zone, Or email us at the YouthZone242 at VenonetsBahamas.com because we want to hear from you. Thanks so much for joining us on the show. And of course, Hallie, thanks for filling in for Sophie. You are awesome job today. And of course, we can't leave you without none, nothing less but the best. Please welcome, premiering one of his new songs and new hits, please welcome the masterful artist himself, Julian Believe. I don't believe it. Next show. Oh, what did he say? I wanna live in wine. Jump stood the party cause I'm feeling right. Come on, everybody, put your hands up high. No need to worry, gonna lose your mind. Dance with somebody, just wine. Everybody, put your hands up right now. We got a song. It's called Party Ambassadors. If you don't like for a party, this is your song. Here we go, here we go. We the party ambassadors. Hey. We the party ambassadors. Hey, everybody know I love to joke and I love to jump and I love to drink and sing. Every time I around the world around town is we always celebrating. Them say we the life of the party, what we do is so amazing. We love to slow and go wild. From that to party we miss me, like we have no control. Anytime, any place, any day, we on party patrol. We represent it and right now we in the mood. So they winding up and they live enough to go show. But we don't. Hey, we put our hands in the air. Put them up, put them up, say we don't care. We put our hands in the air. Get crazy. Hey, say we the party on bar. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
ambassadors. That is what we are. Party ambassadors. That is what we are. That is what we are.